If there is hope, it lies in the proles. If there was hope, it must lie in the proles, because only there, in those swarming, disregarded masses, could the force to destroy the party ever be generated. The party could not be overthrown from within, but the proles, if only they could somehow become conscious of their own strength, would have no need to conspire. They needed only to rise up and shake themselves like a horse shaking off flies. If they chose, they could blow the party to pieces tomorrow morning. Surely, sooner or later, it must occur to them to do it. And yet, he remembered how once he'd been walking down a crowded street, when a tremendous shout of hundreds of voices, women's voices, had burst from a side street a little way ahead. It was a great, formidable cry of anger and despair a deep, loud, oh, that went humming on like the reverberation of a bell. His heart had leapt. It started, he had thought. A riot! The proles are breaking loose at last! When he had reached the spot, it was to see a mob of two or three hundred women crowding around the stalls of a street market with faces as tragic as though they'd been the doomed passengers on a sinking ship. It appeared that one of the stalls had been selling tin saucepans. They were wretched, flimsy things, but cooking pots of any kind were always difficult to get. Now the supply had unexpectedly given out. The successful women, bumped and jostled by the rest, were trying to make off with their saucepans, while dozens of others clamoured around the stall, accusing the stallkeeper of favouritism and of having more saucepans somewhere in reserve. Two bloated women, one of them with her hair coming down, had got hold of the same saucepan and were trying to tear it out of one another's hands. For a moment they were both tugging, and then the handle came off. Winston watched them disgustedly. And yet, just for a moment, what almost frightening power had sounded in that cry from only a few hundred throats. Why was it, then, that they could never shout like that about anything that mattered? Until they become conscious, they will never rebel. And until after they have rebelled, they cannot become conscious. That, he reflected, might almost have been a transcription from one of the party textbooks. The party claimed, of course, to have liberated the proles from bondage. Before the revolution, they'd been hideously oppressed by the capitalists. They'd been starved and flogged. Women had been forced to work in the coal mines— Women still did work in the coal mines, as a matter of fact. Children had been sold into the factories at the age of six. But simultaneously, true to the principles of doublethink, the party taught that the proles were natural inferiors who must be kept in subjection, like animals, by the application of a few simple rules. Left to themselves, like cattle turned loose upon the plains of Argentina, they had reverted to a style of life that appeared to be natural to them, a sort of ancestral pattern. They were born, they grew up in the gutters, they went to work at twelve, they passed through a brief blossoming period of beauty and sexual desire, they married at twenty, they were middle-aged at thirty, they died for the most part at sixty. Heavy physical work, the care of home and children, petty quarrels with neighbours, films, football, beer, and above all gambling, filled up the horizon of their minds. To keep them in control, was not difficult. A few agents of the thought police moved always among them, spreading false rumours, and marking down and eliminating the few individuals who were judged capable of becoming dangerous. But no attempt was made to indoctrinate them with the ideology of the party. It was not desirable that the proles should have strong political feelings. All that was required of them was a primitive patriotism, and even when they became discontented, as they sometimes did, their discontent led nowhere, because being without general ideas, they could only focus it on petty, specific grievances. The larger evils invariably escaped their notice.